What is going on already? My name is Zizi Viper and welcome to this tutorial. So, the reason why I'm making this tutorial is I have news for you. Um, so I think by now most of you guys are familiar with my paddle packs that I've released over the past years. Um, of which actually um, a lot, a lot have sold. So um, I'm, I'm always very surprised, honestly, uh, with over six and a half thousand sales over the past year, which is crazy. A lot of people seem to like it. Um, and you might also have noticed that uh, my third pack of puddle packs is uh, seamless and that led to even more use behind it. So what I did is I made another one seamless again uh, with a lot of different varieties of puddles. So not only roads, you can now use them for mud roads, you can use them for swampy grass, you can use it for pretty much anything you want um, outside of just street roads. Uh, but that's not the reason I'm making this tutorial today. The reason is for my other pack that I released recently, which is animated rain ripples. And uh, the reason I made this pack is because I, going into animation and always having, you know, static puddles with maybe a little bit of waviness in them is kind of boring uh, to some extent. After a while, not saying that it's boring, but after a while it's boring. So um, I thought of myself, so how could I possibly create rain ripples created by raindrops on the road? And uh, you know, most people uh, who, who do this uh, or simulate this stuff do it using X particles or maybe Houdini, uh, or also just, I have seen people sculpting raindrop and rain ripples, which is also pretty cool. But I thought of something how can I make this as simple as I can with a very, very good effect? Um, so I sat down for the last couple of weeks um, developing this uh, rain ripple maps, uh, animated of course, and um, you know, seamless as well as loopable. So you have no problem using it for whatever, how long you want. Um, and it works with my puddle shader. So if you, for example, already purchased a puddle pack of mine, they're easily compatible with the new rain ripples. So you can just combine them without any issues or also with your own puddle shader. If you have one, if you have your own puddle maps, combinable with everything you like. And that was the main, main thought behind this. I wanted to create something that everybody can just add to what they have already and make it work. So um, now I think we should go into the tutorial, but I've been talking for three minutes about this pack. <laughs> but um, the tutorial that I'm making today is how to use this pack um, with my puddle maps together and how to build a puddle shader or also rain shader, so to say. Um, and I know what you, what you might think, you've already made a puddle shader uh, or a puddle tutorial a couple of years ago. That is true, but I have improved it a little bit and, um, you know, made it a little straightforward and easier to use. So today I want to show you how I do this. Before I go into the tutorial, I just want to tell you that Puddle Maps Volume 4 as well as Rain Ripples are available on my Gumroad right now. You can go in the description down below. Um, there is a 50% discount for the first week of sales starting today. So if you want to get it um, for 50% off, make sure to check it out right now and you're really good, good to go. So let's get into the tutorial. How to build this rain shader. It is very, very straightforward and it's um, it's very easy to use. So what we have here, we have the typical Dizzy Viper puddle maps that um, are, I think from puddle, these ones are from Puddle Maps Volume 4, which is a new pack. Um, and this is the, the whole node setup that you have to use. I know it might be a little bit confusing at first, but you'll see as we go through it, it is very, very straightforward and very easy to use and easily customizable because that's also what is very important for me. Um, that, you know, if you recreate this puddle shader that you are able to customize it to your liking without being, you know, a note god on it because I'm not one, so this is a pretty easy note setup. <laughs> All right, so let's get uh, into building this shader. So first things first, what you wanna do is you wanna create a mix material. Uh, and that's the only thing you need for now because we're gonna build everything inside this mix material. So let's open the note editor, make it nice and big because we need a lot, a lot of space as you saw earlier on. So what you need is we need a um, octane material and another octane material. So these are both gonna be our puddle materials, which means uh, this material right here is gonna represent the dry part of the road. And this material is gonna be the um, glossy and wet part of the road, meaning this is what is outside of the puddles and this is what inside, what's inside of the puddles. So with that in mind, we're now gonna add our textures. Um, the first texture we're gonna add are the road textures and I'm gonna use a four lane roadmap by Polygon. So let's just go image texture, 
then create our color map, which is in my um, inside of my polygon folder in the roads. And we're going to be using the full lane damaged 003. Is that the right one? Let's see. Yes. So we're going to be using this texture right here. You can obviously use whatever you want. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're going to be using the uh, asphalt damaged four lane. Asphalt four lane damaged 003 map. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's load in the color map. So we have our color map. Then we need to make another image texture with our roughness map. We're going to skip the specular map for this one because we are actually needing a lot of um, a lot of working space on it. So for now, we're going to leave out the specular map. Ch change this to glossy, by the way. I forgot to mention that. These both have to be glossy materials. And then just plug it in, diffuse and roughness. Now, once we have done that, we can plug our octane material into our material one of our mixed material. Same goes for the octane material that we have down below. We can also already plug that into our second material. I'm just gonna put this up a little bit more since we need a third node coming into the amount a little more up. So we have a little bit of a clean node tree. Um, next, what you wanna do is you're going to create a noise, which is uh, gonna be there just to trigger a little bit more detail inside of our bump maps, which is gonna be mixed with our uh, roughness map. So pretty much uh, that creates a mix between random noise and the asphalt material of our road. So we're gonna do that by adding a noise to this. Uh, I like to use the normal um, octane noise for this. And now the important thing is use Perlin, which is uh, in my eyes, the most realistic looking one for the puddle map. And make sure to lower the contrast of it a little bit. So I like to use something by like 0.05 or 0.06 ish around. So this noise is not going to be plugged into the bump map directly. It's going to go into a color correction first. So we're going to create a color correction node right here. Put that right into our texture here. And then inside of our color correction, you're just going to play with the gamma a little bit. Uh, I like to use a very low gamma. So about 0. Point, well, it's probably going to be like 0. 0.3, 0. 0.4. Let's do 0. 0.35. I can't really decide right now. Um, but you want to go uh, and play with that gamma a little bit, which uh, pretty much just controls the intensity of your uh, noise map. And not uh, the intensity in the sense of strength, but in, um, in the sense of darkness. So the darker your noise is, the glossier your whole um, bump map will be. So there will be less details or more details depending on what you want. Be the, the thing is, if you go too high, um, you sort of get rid of all the nice reflections of your um, of your dry road, which obviously it's not dry, dry road, because if there are puddles, the rest of the road is probably also slightly wet. And this slight wetness also reflects light. But again, if you use a, a bump map, or in this case, a noise map that is too strong, uh, you might end up without these nice reflections on the wet, uh, on the dry uh, side of the road. So again, a little bit of a lower gamma. Uh, I like to use 0 0.35, but you obviously can choose whatever you like, just keep in mind that you uh, should play around with this value a little bit. So what you're going to do now is, as I said, we're going to plug this roughness map also into our bump map. So what you want to do is create another color correction. And in here, uh, I would probably just leave this as it is, maybe play a little bit uh, with the contrast, maybe put the one a little bit up, like let's do 1.5, 0 0.15, sorry, um, ish, and then put your roughness map also into the texture of this color correction. Now you still need another note, which is gonna be our mix note. So we're gonna create a mix note right here and then plug our both color corrections or the roughness and noise map into our mix texture. And inside of our mix texture, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, set the amount to a very high amount. So like 0 0.8, 0 0.9 probably. So it just mixes the texture one more into it than the noise. So we're gonna go 0 0.8, Five, like that maybe a little bit more let's go 0 0.875 Oop, not seven like this 0 0.875 like this and now you can plug this straight into your bump map channel right here so um and the last we gotta do for our dry road material is let's put that a little bit up here um is at our normal map which is uh, not going to change a lot we're just going to put an image texture in it use our road normal map and plug that into our normal channel like this so that's all we have right here and last but not least, what we're going to do is we're going to change the index of our dry material because as you can see, the road is still very wet, which you can obviously still use if you enjoy the look of it. 
Um, I like to use a little lower index for my dry road material, which is going to be about zero, um, one point, I don't know, one point one probably, maybe sometimes less. I have to try what looks good, but for now I'm going to put it one point one. If you desire to have a very dry road, um, for very dry roads, I usually use an index of 1.004. So that's the last thing that we had to do in our dry material. Let's just put that up a little bit more. And now let's start working on our wet material. The wet material is pretty straightforward. We're also going to put in a image texture with our color map, our diffuse map right here. You can alternatively also use the same one from up here. I just tend to like, um, I just tend to use a different image texture because I like more control over it. So sometimes I'd like to change the intensity um, or the power of this uh, diffuse map without changing this one. So I'm gonna plug that into my diffuse material, uh, into my diffuse channel, I'm sorry, just like that. Next, we're gonna create another image texture with our roughness map in it, which is not gonna serve as a roughness map in this case. We're just gonna use it for a bump map, but we don't plug it into our bump map yet because we still have to add our, our uh, puddle map to it because obviously my puddle maps also will affect the bump of our, of our road. But before plugging the roughness map into anything, make sure to change the power to something low, such as 0.3 or 0.4. So let's go just with the mid of it, 0.35. Um, and then what you want to do is create a color correction again, which is draw driven by our roughness map. And again, in here, what you want to do is you want to play with the gamma. So to get the most details out of it, I found that the sweet spot for this specific map is 1.8 in the gamma. And then, um, unfortunately the map becomes quite dark. So what you want to do is turn up the brightness a little bit more again. So about two or double or sometimes it'll triple the brightness. So what that does is pretty much give you a very strong resemblance of details. So now before you plug this into the bump map, you just add another mix note and put this into texture two and then put that into our bump map. And this mix texture amount is going to be quite low. So it's mainly driven by the puddle map that we're going to add later on. So I'm going to use 0.1 right here. Now let's put this down a little bit. So we have a little bit of space for our puddle maps. Uh, what we're going to do now is, yeah, like I said, add the puddle map. So we're going to put that above that. And I'm going to use one of our new puddle maps, which is going to be the puddle maps volume four. And let's see what map we have here. So we have again, as in all packs, we have 20 different maps of all sorts of uh, looks. For this specific tutorial, I'm just going to use the first one. So let's load that in. This image texture with the puddle map, now you put into the texture one of our mixed texture of the wet material. In here, make sure that the gamma is very high. I like to use something close to 10. So maybe 10 is a little bit too much because it almost uh, becomes white that way. but maybe something lower such as uh, eight and maybe a little bit of a higher power like 1.05. Now duplicate this image texture with the puddle map and put it up here, which is now gonna be our amount for mixing the two materials because uh, what essentially happens with this shader is you have a dry material and a wet material and you mix them by the amount of the puddle maps, which results in wet puddles and dry roads. So what we're gonna do is we have the puddle map again here, which is the exact duplicate of this one. Now what we're gonna change is the gamma. So we're gonna put it to a lower gamma. Let's keep this at the normal power, but also the gamma has to be lower than it's used to usually. So about 0.7, put it like this, and then just plug it into our amount. Now all that's missing are the different transform nodes, which I like to simply use, uh, you know, to have a little bit more control of which which maps have what size and that way you can, you know, imagine for example, you have a long road texture, but only the square puddle maps and you don't want them to repeat a lot. So what you're going to end up doing is uh, put a transform node on the puddle maps, maybe at the angle of it, or also the mixing of the different, of the different puddle maps, because you can also, of, of course, um, combine different puddle maps. Uh, so they don't tile. I mean, they don't tell, but I mean, so they, they don't repeat uh, as visibly as they do if you don't change anything. So let's do that right now. So we're going to add a transform node and make sure to group these transform nodes into the different materials. So you need one transform node for the noise, you need one transform node for all the road textures and one transform node for all the puddle maps. So what we're going to do, we're going to do that right now. So this is the first trans transform node, which is going to be for our road maps which is this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So one, two, three, 
And then we just have these two left, which is our roughness map and our diffuse map. Just like that. So now we have one transform node that controls pretty much all our roadmaps at once, because obviously you don't want to have the diffuse map in one angle and then the, its normal map into a different angle. That doesn't look very good. So we have that right now. Next, we're gonna create another transform node. This one's gonna be for our noise. So we're gonna put it right here, noise right in that. We're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it the way it is right now, um, just to, to make it less complicated. And then another transform node for just our puddle maps. So which is going to be puddle map one, and puddle map two, which is our amount trigger, just like that. And then we have the puddle shader that I use to create my puddles. So let's have a look on what this looks like. So here we have the scene from before, which I showed right at the beginning of the tutorial. And here we have uh, the puddle shader that we just created. So let's just drag and drop it onto this plane right here, which is our road. And there we go. That is what the puddles look like. As you can see there, are, uh, the lights of course are a little bit bright, but um, what we can do now is pretty much change all the different puddles. As you can see, they look pretty good, I think. For example, as you can see, we chose a little bit of a higher index on our dry road material, which leads to a very high reflectance up here. So for example, if we now want to change it to a little bit of a drier road, what we can do is go into our index and change it to the low 0.004, uh, 1.004 that I suggested early on. And as you can see what that does, it gets rid of a lot of these highlights right here. Uh, but while still maintaining a little bit of um, reflectance on the dry material of the road. Of course, like I said, you can change this to your liking. I'm just explaining um, which values you have to change in order to get the result that you're looking for. So I think on this one, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of a higher index again. Uh, probably let, let, let's try what 0 .0, oh, uh, 1.01 looks like in this one. Maybe a little bit, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I, what I want to see right here. Maybe play with our offsets a little bit so we can actually change the placement of our puddles just like that. Um, obviously if you want to change just the puddles without the, the road material changing its transformation you have to do this inside of this transform node right here. As you can see I already used a little bit of a higher um, transform node right here. Uh, maybe you want to use a little bit of a lower one. Let's change it to one so we have the original size. Maybe a little bit bigger actually. Let's, do, let's try 1.5 and then we can also rotate it. I usually rotate it by 30 degrees so you can actually not see any tiling or any repetition in the in the puddles. There we go. Here we have our puddle maps the way they should look. Um, again, if you change this value, like let me, let, me, let me demonstrate this for a second. If we change it to let's say 1.2 now, um, sometimes what happens is that the bump map and the amount change, uh, don't change at the same time on the lab viewer. So what you want to do is just uh, refresh your viewport and you'll get exactly what you were looking for. Now to the rain ripples part. So what you're going to do to add the rain ripples is pretty simple and straightforward. You're just going to add an image texture, load in the first sequence of your rain map. As you can see in the pack, there are four different intensities of rain. We have soft, moderate, strong and heavy rain. Uh, for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use moderate rain. I really like that map. And this is a PNG sequence. So just, yeah, sequence out of different images. And what you want to do is you want to load in the first uh, image in this sequence, in this folder, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Load this in. And then once that's loaded in, make sure to go to animation in your image texture, go to animation. Set the mode to loop because otherwise it will just play through for these 135 frames and then stop. Uh, we're going to have loop and then we have movie start frame. It's going to be at zero because yeah, that, that's where it starts. And movie end frame is going to be 90 because that is where our animation is going to uh, stop. Obviously, if you have a longer sequence such as, I don't know, 2000 frames, this is going to be 2000. And make sure to change the movie frame rate to 30 frames a second because that is um, the frame rate that I rendered and exported these ripples with. So once you did that, um, what you're going to do is add a add node put your image texture with the rain ripples right into texture two, and then take this, uh, the node from the color correction of our bump map and put it into texture one. And then the add node goes right into texture two of our mixed texture like this. So what that does now, obviously you don't have to change, um, you obviously don't have to add this image texture to your dry material uh, since like I said, the, the road is very dry. So there are usually no rain ripples on a dry surface. Um, obviously, if you have a wetter uh, dry road, 
such as we had early on before we changed it, you also might want to add this rain ripple texture to the bump map up here, but very, very subtle, so it's not too visible on the road. And just um, to be able to control all of the rain ripples uh, sizes, you also put a transform node right in here. And also what you can play around with a lot is in the image texture with the power settings. What this does is it pretty much controls the height and intensity of each ripple itself. So if you want like just very subtle, very little uh, ripples, you might want to leave this at one. But if you want very strong ripples and very, very represent representative tip, um, ripples, I usually use a value between five and 10 in the power. Uh, but before we do that, um, I just realized that our, um, our rain ripples are really, really big. So we're going to change the size and put it down to like, I don't know, 0 0.2. And then in our image texture, let's do eight as the power. And as you can see, we now got rain ripples if we go through this image sequence. Just look at this. Do you see the rain ripples right there? This is, maybe, this is maybe a little bit too strong. Let's go through it a little bit more and see. Might be a little bit too strong. Um, and maybe also a little bit too big. Uh, let's try five and then in the transform node, let's go with 0 0.1, just like that. And now we have smaller rain ripples that look way better, as you can see right there. Let's make them a little bit bigger for the tutorial because I don't think they are very visible in the tutorial right here. There we go. There you can see the rain ripples. And of course, depending on the intensity that you take, there are more or less rain ripples on it. So that was the tutorial on how to create puddle maps and the rain ripple effects um, using your own puddle maps or uh, my puddle maps, as well as uh, the rain ripple pack that I just released on Gumroad, like I said. Um, again, if you want, if you're interested in the packs, you can just go into the description down below. Uh, the first week is 50% off, so you might want to get your hands on it early. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I am very looking forward to all the nice renders you're gonna make. Um, you don't have to credit me for anything, of course, uh, but it's always highly appreciated if you do so, if you use the Puddle Maps uh, or this tutorial to create something and tag me in your posts. Um, not because I want to have credit, but it's more nice to see what all of you guys create with these packs and with these tutorials because, uh, yeah, so some, some posts that I've seen in the past were very, very nice and, you know, taken completely out of context of Puddles, they, people who have used the Puddle Maps to mix, you know, brick walls with plaster and stuff and, and it just created a broken wall. It said there are no limits to the creative creativity uh, from what I could tell. Um, and yeah, that was the tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did so, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. I love you all. Take care and keep on rendering. Peace out.